Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're gonna go ahead and pick up where we kind of left off on the last video with our track painting process that we have going on. So tonight what I have planned is we're gonna go ahead and cover red brick, cobblestone, and we're gonna do some cracking. And then we're also gonna to have to do a little bit of painting as well to bring all these different pieces together. So yeah, it's gonna be a fun video. All right, so let's do this. So here we are at the layout. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take care of an area through here, through the start and finish line. And we're gonna go ahead and do some red brick and whatnot. But uh, what I wanna do is bring it around through the corner here and we're gonna come down through the front straight right in this area, and we have the pit lane. So the pit lane is gonna need some different, uh, different effects on it as well. And then there's the corner that we did on that, that one video where we came out and around and went down the straightaway, or that side straight. So this comes down into the, the front portion here where the pit lane's at. So, what I have planned is that we're gonna go ahead and do kind of a cobblestone and uh, concrete mix in this area, and we're gonna throw some asphalt in it as well. So first thing we need to do, now that we've established the area that we're gonna be working on, is to go ahead and get things lined out in such a way where uh, we have a path to go on. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and start uh, planning this out. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go, go ahead and establish as far as where we're going to have the different effects at. So you notice I went ahead and put some cars out here on the track. And the idea behind that is that I can get my proper spacing as far as how wide is my pit lane going to be and how much of this do I want to actually have as far as the track. So what I want to do is just go ahead and make kind of a mental note as far as where everything's at here. Now I'm going to take these cars and now move them down to the actual track lane here, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and take some three quarter inch tape. And all I'm going to do is go ahead and lay a line down here. And what this is going to do is establish kind of where my pit lane is and where the actual track surface is gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and lay this down through here. And I'm just gonna make it as such. So I have a, a nice lane all the way down and just establish that out. That way, I'm not trying to second guess myself when I have everything apart and trying to figure it all out. So now that I have this all established, I can get these cars out of the way and now I can disassemble my track and uh, we can go ahead and, and start taking this to the next step. Okay, so I have my track down here and I've went ahead and secured it to this this board that I have or piece of plastic. And uh, what I wanna do is make sure my pieces don't move because when we do this effect, we don't need to have the different tracks moving around. We need them to stay stationary where they're gonna be actually on the layout itself so that when we go ahead and do our lines and everything, everything corresponds. So first thing you wanna do is just go ahead and make sure this is secured to some type of platform where the, the tracks aren't gonna shift. Second thing I went ahead and did is I took some isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag and I wiped everything down. So everything's all nice and clean, all right? So we wanna make sure that our surface is, is clean so that when we go ahead and start doing our effects, we don't have any oils in there or any type of grease or anything like that. All the residues pretty much moved off of it. Now, while we're gonna do this, is that I have a soldering iron. Now, this soldering iron is just a basic pencil style soldering iron. And if you look at the tip, it comes down to a pretty good point, okay? So you wanna do this with a, a sharp tip style of, of uh, soldering iron. You don't need one of the blunt tips or anything like that because you're not gonna be able to make 
the, the cleanness of the effect that you want to put onto it. So first thing is now that I have this line established on the back side, and what I want to do is create a cobblestone effect on this part of the track and then my pit lane itself, I wanna go ahead and do like a, a concrete slab. So this area will be concrete, and then we'll have cobblestone down through this portion of it. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my, my soldering iron, and first off is I'm gonna go ahead and establish the line between the concrete and the cobblestone. So the tape that we had laid down before to dictate as far as where that break is gonna be, is where I'm gonna go ahead and attack first. So what I'm gonna do is just take this and it goes all the way out here to the end and <clears throat> using the tape as your guide, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put this down and then slide it back, okay? And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and establish a nice line all the way down through. So let's see if, how we're gonna do this. So. <laughs> I'm gonna come up and use that point to the edge of the tape and go ahead and just slide it back and try to do it in one portion like so. And it doesn't take much pressure, just a light amount of force and just dragging it back. We'll go ahead and just put a little bit of a line right here. So I did that. Now, go ahead and establish the side right there. And we're just gonna bring it back. Just like so. That portion of the track. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and keep on going all the way down and uh, get that line established. And then once that line's established, we can go ahead and remove this piece of tape. So when we come back, I'll have my line established and I'll have my tape removed. Right. So now I have my line established and you see it goes all the way down through here and it's real light, but it's enough that we can go ahead and remove the tape and we have it established. So at this point, what we need to do is just bring it on back here. So let me go ahead and set the camera back up here. And if you notice down on the one side right here, I have tape going straight across. And the reason for that is that I'm gonna do kind of a staggered type of effect right here so my concrete or the asphalt that comes out of that corner isn't going to just stop straight across i'm going to go ahead and just kind of notch it out just a little bit so that it kind of breaks it up makes it look a little bit more natural so so it looks like you know a little bit of patchwork that was done on the end so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and take some of my, my handy dandy tape here and figure out how we're going to do this so if I just take this guy off and put him a little bit on the opposite track and then take this, put it right through, what I can do now is just give it a little bit of a stagger, you know, just something to break the eye up just a little bit. And I'll do the same thing on the far side of the track where this, this, this area will go ahead and, uh, and stop. So next thing to do from here is figure out what type of cobblestone we're gonna do. Now, there's tons of different style of, of cobblestone streets. And if you're over in Europe or the UK, you know how many different types of cobblestone there are out there. So what I like to do, and uh, for me, again, pictures, are great is I go ahead and grab my tablet or my phone or whatever that I can go ahead and get on the internet and start studying different types of pattern or, or cobblestone. And the type that we're gonna go ahead and do through this area is this one right here. So let me go ahead and we'll zoom this up. And this is kind of the effect we're going to go after. I kind of like this effect because we have a little bit different size uh, brick slash cobble that's, that's down through it. And it has a nice edging around the edge as well. And that'll look good as far as with the track edge. So this is kind of the floor mat that I'm going to go off of. Now, 
this obviously is a, is a huge area and to try to get all your proportions right and everything else we're probably going to need ourselves um something to help us out because trying to do this all freehand and keep a pattern is going to be a little bit difficult so what we'll do is now that we have what type of cobblestone we're going to do and we have this all laid out we come back i'll go ahead and show you guys how i'm going to keep my pattern the way that we need it so we can replicate what the picture is all right so we're back and now we need to go ahead and start laying out our grid for our cobblestone so you'll notice i have a few things that are laying here on the track now i brought out two different style of rulers this is a plastic ruler and this is a metal ruler now being that this is plastic, this is not exactly the type of ruler you're gonna to wanna to use because obviously we're using a soldering iron and it's, it's melting this plastic, it's definitely gonna melt this plastic, all right? So a plastic ruler is gonna be a no-no when it comes to this type of stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that away. And we're gonna do is use a metal ruler or straight edge doesn't have to be a ruler just something that is metal that's pliable that you can go ahead and put down and use it to go ahead and work off of that a soldering iron isn't going to affect the other thing i have here is some quarter inch masking tape now if we go back to our photo so let's go back to our photo we can see on the sides here how it has a nice line that goes all the way down through just kind of establish as far as the edge of the road so what i want to do first is i'm going to go ahead and take my quarter inch tape and i'm going to pull this down and make the edge of my my road so i'm going to go ahead and put this all the way down down through the other side here and this will just create that edge all the way down through so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and lay this one out and then I'll also lay one down here on the other side and like we did with the other tape I'm gonna go ahead and take my soldering iron and drag it down through to establish that edge first so let's just go ahead and do a little bit of this real quick and get up on it drag this down just like so Put that back over here and let me pull this off and we'll take a look at it and there we go we have the edge right there. So if I bring this over and we zoom this in, you can see where that edge is at, right through here. So now we have that established. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep on doing that all the way down through, and then also do it on the other side. When we come back, then we'll start laying out our pattern on the rest of it. Okay, so now I went ahead and I removed my tape and I have my edges both established. Now, before we go any further, I wanna go ahead and point something out. I'm gonna go ahead and do one style of cobble on this. Now again, I, I touched on there's all sorts of different styles of cobble. And before you, you go ahead and attempt this on your own track, it might be wise to go ahead and grab a piece of, you know, spare track that you have, maybe it's, it's old or worn out or, or just something you have laying around and try some different techniques with that piece of track before you start attacking your actual track because this is something that you cannot turn around and go back saying, oh, I messed up, let me start all over. Can't exactly do that because we're actually melting the track. So this is a piece that I, I think I've showed you guys, but it has a bunch of different effects on it I was playing around with. Now, this area down in here is a different style of cobble than what we're gonna, we're gonna do here. This style right here was the type that, it's much like uh, the cobblestone that I created on my layout with polystyrene. Same type of idea. 
I went ahead and made some bigger areas and then just kind of made these smaller ones connect to it. And if you prefer this type of cobble, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. It's just a matter of whatever your personal preference is. So I want to go ahead and point this out. This is one style. We're doing another style. But um, and then also that before you start attacking your actual track, it might be wise to go ahead and just say, you know what, I got an old piece of track and I'm just going to I'm just going to play with it and see what I can come up with. So that is something I did here. And there's red brick that we're going to do later on. But yeah, here's this cobble and we're going to do a different cobble there. So I'll put this off to the side. And we'll come back to this. So now that we have those sides uh, <laughs> put down, next thing we need to do is figure out the spread that we're going to have as far as these type of cobbles that go down through. And a good way of doing this would be like with a, a ruler. And what you can do is go ahead and measure out as far as how, you know, how wide you want these. Now, you also want to take in consideration that when you go ahead and start putting your lines in that it is going to melt it. So the spacing that you have here, okay, you say, okay, I'm going to be at a half centimeter, right? Take in consideration that once that is put on there, it starts to melt, that this one centimeter isn't actually going to be one centimeter when you do it because it will melt. So your bricks will end up being a little bit smaller because you got to compensate for the space that you have in between them. So what I'm going to plan on doing is doing a, a one millimeter or a <laughs> a half a centimeter spread on my lines going down through. So this gets to be a little tedious. And what I mean by that is you can either use some tape. So what we can do is, is lay this out and then bring tape down onto the area, which is how I'll do this. So I'm set that down through here and go ahead and mark, ugh, mark it down through like i said it's tedious let me grab a, a pin real quick what i'm going to do here is just go ahead and use a sharpie so this is a silver sharpie and what you can do is go ahead and put a mark right there one right there and come off of it so you can establish your grid and then go ahead and take your tape lay between those two points okay so you got it laid between these two points come on there we go and then we're going to take our soldering iron and just go ahead and connect them we're just going to bring it across. All right, so once you got that, go ahead and pull that out, and you have your line right here established through. Now, if you don't want to use the tape, you can go back to the ruler or the metal, metal edge. And again, what I'll do is let me go ahead and lay out a few of these. So we're going to put one there, one there, one there. Okay, and again, over here. Let me just go ahead and get a few of these established, like so. And again, I'm using a, a silver Sharpie, or you want a light colored Sharpie that will go ahead and show up when you put it down onto it. So actually, let me reposition this over here for you guys. There we go. Let's see this a little bit better. Got some funky camera work going on. All right, so there is the dots, okay? So we have our dots that we went ahead and measured out. Now go ahead and take your middle straight edge 
Just line up your two dots, hold it down, soldering iron out. And this actually works really good because the, the uh, metal itself, you can really lean, you know, lean that soldering iron against it. So just go ahead and get a few of these down. So, this one, and there we go. We just go ahead and just start bringing them on down through. So, what I'm going to do is just keep this going on and go all the way down my track. When we come back, we'll go ahead and start putting in the other uh, the lines for those cobbles. Okay, so a little bit's been done since we first, since we left off. Now, I went ahead and put all these lines in all the way down. And then I started on the way back and putting my cross lines in. Now, with, with cobblestone, one thing that's different from like brick cobblestone compared to like red brick. Red brick is very uniform. So if I bring out my little section that I have here, a little piece that I built, if we look at the, the red brick on here, you can see there's a distinct pattern, the way everything goes through. You have your, your uh, mortar joints all line up with each other, okay? So let me go ahead and set this off to the side. And with brick cobblestone, so if we bring this up, it has kind of a sporadic pattern to it. You know, there's gonna be smaller pieces amongst larger pieces and everything else. So you know, the idea of a cobble. <clears throat> so <laughs> what we have here is we have kind of like small, then we have large, and it just, it kind of breaks it up. It makes it, well, it, it makes it cobblestone-ish if, if there's any word for it. But if we, if we look down in here, you can see I haven't done this area. I've done up to this, I've done all everything all around it. So what we're going to do is now that we have these lines put in, take our soldering iron, and pretty much all we're gonna do is just go in and just start making these lines through. Now, I'm not worried about as far as how big I'm making them or anything else, because it's, it's gonna vary, all right? But you'll notice that what I am concentrating on is that when I have a seam here, I'm not putting another seam right next to it. Obviously, I'm, I'm coming down or up. But what we want to do is just, just go ahead and just put in some different lines. You notice now this pattern is different than that pattern. And it's just a matter of just switching it up. So, you know, it's, uh, it's tedious and it takes a while to do, but when you when you finish it all up, you know it looks per, it looks really cool. So if we just bring that up there, you can see how this pattern, you know, isn't uniform. Okay, I guess that's the big thing that I'm trying to get across is that when you're doing the the cobble style brickwork, make sure that your bricks are not all uniform. If they all look uniform, it's going to look more like a red brick than a cobblestone brick okay so again let me just go ahead and do this again so we have this line that i did there now i'm just going to come up here put one i'm going to put a, a another one right there so now we have a small brick and then i'll bring this one down and we'll make a couple larger bricks here this one hey we'll put a small brick right here maybe another small brick bring one up there so you can see there's really no per se pattern to it you're just putting bricks in as they lay so just keep on doing that and just making that pattern go all the way through now when it comes down to the side here so the side if I come up over here you can see the bordering that I put on on this area right here and this is where we had that line that went down the side so these stones right here what i'm doing is i'm skipping 
So let's see here, let me get that one. So what I'm going to do is that I have a, a stone here, stone here. I'm gonna skip one and a half, right? So skipping the one, going to the half of that one. Skipping the one, going to the half. One, going to the half. And then that's making those border all the way down, okay? So I'll just go ahead and, and do this a little bit more here. Just kind of drag these down. <clears throat> so keep on doing this. Where I'm getting to is where we get right down here to the edge. So okay, now we're down here where the stones are coming off the edge. Now you can just bring them up to that edge or you can roll it down through and then take your line and just bring it down alongside the track just a little bit. What this will do is just give a little bit of a definition. So when you're looking up on top of it, and when we paint it, you'll actually see a mortar joint that goes down to the side of the track. So when your scenery and everything is up here to the edge, you don't have a smooth edge. You actually have something that looks like an actual stone down here on the edge. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and finish up this. And when we come back, <laughs> We'll start on the next step. Okay, so now that we have all of our, uh, our brickwork done, as far as with our soldering iron, what we wanna do now is take a little bit of 80 grit sandpaper and we're gonna scuff it lightly. Now, you can see that I went ahead and used some quarter inch masking tape and I've taped off my rails and that way it's all protected, especially now that we're gonna use some 80 grit sandpaper because we don't wanna sand our rails. So just go ahead and get those all protected. And the reason why we're using the 80 grit is that when you use the soldering iron on plastic, what it's gonna do, you're melting the surface and it's gonna create a little bit of a ridge around each one of the little bricks that you put in there. And with the 80 grit, what we can do is kind of just knock the sharpness off on the edges and just kind of level out the track just a little bit. So what we're gonna do with this is on this area, we're just gonna take it and just lightly kiss the top of it. And what that's gonna do is knock down those loose edges and those, those flares that are on the sides of all these bricks. So just take your 80 grit and just give it a, a quick little scuff. You don't wanna you don't wanna dig into it or nothing, just just a real quick little scuff just to take care of those edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and sand this off real quick, just the bricks, and then we come back, we'll go ahead and prep this all out for starting the painting cool. process. So now I went ahead and I have it all scuffed down. Now we need to do is go ahead and get it all cleaned up. So if you've seen any of the previous videos with the paint uh, painting, you'll know that we need to take care of our release agent that's on our plastic. So how we're going to go ahead and do that is we're going to go ahead and take the lacquer thinner, the clean rag, wipe everything down, and we're not going to load it, load it up. We're going to uh, just kind of, oh, let me get the lid off this. Go ahead and get this a little damp here. Okay. And now I have some lacquer thinner on this rag and we just wanna go ahead and get it all cleaned up. So what we're doing is cleaning the surface, getting our, our uh, release agent released out of the plastic and get it all clean so we can get good adhesion. And uh, if you notice, I didn't load it up a whole bunch. I'm not putting the, a whole bunch of material down because, well, for one thing, this piece right here, the pit lane is a digital piece of track. And if you have a bunch of lacquer thinner and it soaks in and goes into the electronics, yeah, it's not gonna be such a good thing. So we don't wanna load that up at all. We just wanna go ahead and get this lacquer thinner on here and just clean up that surface. So. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this all wiped down. 
And also what's going to happen is these areas that we marked it with the, uh, the silver Sharpie, our lacquer thinner is going to go ahead and get all that stuff cleaned off as well. So I'll go ahead and get this all wiped down and then I'll go ahead and wipe it with some alcohol and I'll get a, again, go over the top of it with alcohol and then we're ready to go ahead and start the scuffing process to get this ready for paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it all down. I'll wipe it then with alcohol. When we come back, we'll go ahead and start scuffing it. Okay, so I wiped it down with lacquer thinner. Then I went ahead and wiped it down with alcohol. Now what we need to do is go ahead and get it all scuffed with some gray Scotch-Brite. So using gray Scotch-Brite because it's not as aggressive as the other Scotch-Brites that are out there. And being that this is kind of a soft plastic, I don't want to use a real strong type of Scotch-Brite because it will actually put scratches into the surface. And when you go to paint it, you'll actually see some of those scratches that are in there. So gray scotch Brite's a real safe way to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a little bit of alcohol. Let's see here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wet this down just a little bit. And just go ahead and scuff it all up. So same way that we um, prepped on the other previous videos is the same way we're gonna go ahead and prep this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all scuffed down and we come back, we'll be ready for uh, our painting process. So now we're ready to go ahead and start the painting process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use a kind of a gray primer and I'm gonna go ahead and prime everything out. Now, this is the same kind of darker gray primer that I use when I paint the, the track for the, uh, the four can process as far as the, the spray can process. And this is the base color that I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this whole entire thing out with this darker gray because I'm gonna go ahead and on the adjacent front and rear of this is gonna have that four can process so I can blend it into the other parts of the track. But at the other point, we want a primer to go ahead and set down into this because of two things. One, we wanna have a lighter substrate, so a gray, that's gonna work down inside of our brickwork so it looks as a mortar. And two, it's a primer, so what this is gonna do also is gonna add adhesion for the painting process that we're gonna put up on the top side of this. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and spray it with this primer so it's pretty much we're just going to go ahead and give it a a nice little coat and just make sure you get your edges and then come right over the top and just go ahead and prime it out and this is going to get down inside all the cracks and everything and uh yeah it worked pretty good so just go ahead and give a good little once over and we come back that'll be done and i'll go ahead and spray out the adjacent areas and remember we're going to go ahead and do a concrete on this area as far as the pit lane so when we come back i'll have the gray down as far as with the, the track painting and we'll have the gray across here as far as the uh the concrete and we can go ahead and take the brickwork, our cobblestone, to the next step. Okay, so now we have our primer down, and I went ahead and took care of the adjacent areas on our track here, so it'll blend into those other areas. So we have the concrete there, and then you can see the asphalt that I had on both sides. But you can see how that primer just kind of penetrates right down into that pattern and soaks right down into the middle of it. Now there's a little bit of overspray on it, it's okay, because we still got quite the little painting process to do on this until it's all complete. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just let this sit and dry, and uh, we'll come back and we'll start painting out that cobblestone. 
All right, so now we have everything's nice and dry and I've been playing around a little bit here, but how I'm painting my cobble is I'm using a kind of a, a gray wash. So I have a, a gray wash that's going on here and I've got just a mix of different colors. I have an off-white or an antique white. Uh, this is a light French blue and then I'm also throwing in kind of a beige-ish color as well. And what I've, what I'm coming up with is just to go ahead and get a, a small brush and then come in and you can hit some of these. Okay. So hit them kind of here and there where, you know, where you'd like to have your pattern at. And this is just the way that I'm doing this one. If you want to do a, a different color, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of different uh, color pavers that are out there, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this on uh on this part of the track so i'm using just a couple different colors now i'm going to come in with this blue and just kind of hit it here and there and i'm just staying on top of the actual brickwork itself okay and again this is you know you could do just kind of a quick wash and wipe it all off if you wanted to and call that good or if you wanted to come in and put a little bit more color into it this is how we're going to do it. So there's that. And then I'll just go ahead and put a little bit of this, this white in there as well. So we'll just kind of throw some right here, maybe up here. Okay. So now we have kind of these certain colors established. Now I'm going to do is take a cloth or a paper towel and just go ahead and block this okay so what this is going to do is it's going to well it's going to help it dry <laughs> but also what it's going to do is soften the color down a little bit and give a little bit of texture plus what we're doing is you can see how it's kind of going off into some of the other stones now after we have that i'm going to come back with my my gray wash Okay, and same type of thing. I'm going to go ahead and hit a couple of these here and there. Now, this being a wash, what's going to happen here is that this is actually going to bleed a little bit when we do some stuff. And I will show you when we hit it with our, our rag, it's going to go ahead. And bring it around a lot more and then just go ahead and work it okay so we can just kind of work it a little bit in that gray and we'll transfer over some to some of those other stones and just kind of give that kind of the, the bluish gray cobble look so that's what I'm going to do and just kind of keep on going through, use the same type of technique on my border here. Then we come back, what we'll do is go ahead and give a little bit of highlight and I'll be ready to go. All right, so I've got it to this point and you can see I've done quite a bit of painting. And the last little bit of this is that you have a black wash and this is an acrylic and it's reduced out with a uh, with quite a bit of water. I usually do my washes at anywhere from 25 to one to 50 to one mixture. And what you want is a real thin watery black that has no real pigment to it. All we're going to want to do is go through here and do a staining effect. And with the water wash, it'll get down inside these areas in between to make our grout lines really pop out. So, what I'm doing with this is just put it on and then just, just tap it. Just tap it in like so and let it settle right down in between everything. And as we do this, I'll show you. The top here, I have not put the wash on. So we're only doing the wash down here so you can see the difference. But if we go like this, just kind of work it in a little bit. You don't want to go back and forth with it because we don't really want to smear what we have. We're just... We're wanting to, to add a little bit of a staining effect to it. So, I'm going to go a little bit further. 
and kind of load it on a little bit. Now also you want to keep in mind that you are like with this, this section right here isn't, but my end sections are definitely digital track. So being that this is water, you want to be a little bit careful. You don't want it to load all the way in and get into electronics. So when it's like that, just go ahead and take a rag and then just kind of blot it and kind of dry it up just a little bit. Not much. You just want to take the little bit of surface moisture out of it. So we're just going to blot it like so. And then there we go. And you can see all the, the grout lines and, and it creates a staining. It's really cool. But you can see from this to this the difference with it so and as this dries down it'll lighten up a little bit so it really starts to look pretty cool so there we go so at this point i just need to go ahead and finish doing my black wash on this piece and i still have my whole other piece i need to paint and we come back um we'll go ahead and get our lines on this and uh get it back on the layout all right, so now I have the, uh, the track back down here on the layout. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and lay out my lines as far as the track edging. So what I'm using is quarter inch masking tape. And I'm just going to go ahead and mask off the areas that I want to go ahead and paint. And by this area, since it's right out here in the middle, just go ahead and use that tape on either side to give myself a nice clean line. Now, if you've seen the other videos, you can see how I'll do it down on the edges of the track. And if I move the camera right over here, what we're doing here is we're actually taking the line from the corner and then I'm just lining my tape up to it so that I can go ahead and put my line in right there. And what I'm gonna use is just an off-white. So it's an acrylic off-white. So today, been using this stuff and this is just a, an antique white and it works you know it works great it's just an acrylic paint so which is with the small paintbrush and what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and paint these lines in so once we get that all done what we're gonna do is take a break from our cobblestone and we're gonna go ahead and jump over and do some red brick so at this point we have our cobblestone all done the last thing that needs to be done here minus our, our white lines, is to go ahead and weather the corner. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and jump over, we'll do red brick, and then we'll come back and we'll do it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my white lines on here. When we come back, we'll go ahead and uh, start attacking some red brick. Okay, so we're back, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do some red brick. So my start and finish line obviously is right here on the edge of my arc pro but i kind of hesitant i don't really want to go ahead and start soldering on my control base so what i'm going to do is the track that's right next to it that goes ahead and matches up i'm going to go ahead and do my my uh, red brick right here and it's kind of a tribute as far as to indianapolis with the brickyard and how they have a uh, they still have the old brick right there at the start and finish line. So I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side. I am going to paint this, but I just don't, I just don't want to use my soldering iron on my base. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. And we're going to attack this piece of track. So being that we're only going to do a little strip of it, what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the, uh, the metal ruler and I'm just going to make some marks at uh, a half centimeter each so I'm actually going to come off the end here just a little bit actually let me run it up just a little bit and I'm going to put my first mark right here and I'm going to do just a, a few rows of brick so we got there we got what there's six so I'm going to come back over here and we will do six over here. And I'm just marking these at a half centimeter apart. All right, so now that we have that, now what we can do, let's go ahead and get the soldering iron plugged in. 
and we're going to go ahead and scrap our lines the same way that we did with the cobblestone, but it's a little bit different. So we come back, I'll have my soldering iron all fired up, and we'll start uh, soldering our track. Okay. So now we have our soldering irons all fired up, and we have our track in pretty much the same way that we did our cobblestone. It's the same way I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and lay the ruler down, and with the the soldering iron here, it's going to go ahead and supply some pressure and just drag it right on down. I'm going to bring it all the way off the side. And there it is. So there's one, and I'll just go ahead and keep on going through till I have all these lines. When we come back, we'll start making those into bricks. Okay, so now we have our lines down through, going back and forth, and now we need to go ahead and put our vertical lines in. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use my trusty ruler here, and I'm gonna make my bricks so they're one centimeter. So what I'm gonna do here, if I bring this up, is just measure these off at one centimeter and do a little dot. Now, you don't have to do this all the way down through. It's pretty much, you just need to go ahead and do your top row so it it is your uh, datum point, and then you can work off of that. So down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a dot at each one, just across, okay? And the same thing over here, so. And you notice here at the end, okay, even though it's not quite right, went ahead and put a dot there anyway. And that'll all just kind of work out into the mix as we build out the grid of, uh, of bricks. So that actually is right there. Now <clears throat> that we have that, put that down, is we'll take these lines and we'll just go straight down. So just to cut straight down through it, okay? And then we'll skip a line and put another one down. This is where the bricks are different than cobbles. The brick cobbles have different sizes throughout the whole entire grid, okay? But a red brick, all your bricks are gonna be the same size and you need to have that set up in such a way so that it all looks uniform when you have everything laid out. So let me go ahead and get these like so. And I'll just do a couple of these and I'll stop and then show the next portion of it. So now that we have it like that, you can see our bricks. Just go ahead and go halfway in on a brick. So this one right here, halfway in, we'll bring that down. Halfway in, bring that down. And then follow that same type of idea all the way down through. So let me do one more here, that guy. And then as this guy lines up down below, just go ahead, hit him there. And then that'll line up down like that. So that way your brick has a standardized pattern all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this. When we come back, we're gonna go ahead and have to scuff this a little bit to get it to mellow out just a little, just a tad and then we can start our painting process. So we're back, and now what I've done is taken a little bit of quarter inch tape and I've covered up my rails to protect them. The next step is we wanna take that 80 grit paper like we did on the cobblestone. We're gonna do the same thing to this as far as with this red brick. Now, obviously I stopped right here, but if you wanted to keep on going with this red brick, you would just keep on following that pattern all the way through. So just to go ahead and point that out. but. Here's with the 80 grit, and what we're going to do is just, again, sand this down because when it gets up on the, uh, when it melts the track just a little bit, it puts a little bit of a ridge onto it, okay? So what this 80 grit's going to do is going to knock that ridge down so that your, your bricks won't have like a, a whoop to them, okay? They'll be leveled out. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take this 80 grit and just go ahead and Sand it down a little bit. And get this one side here. And that's pretty much all it takes. 
and now it's leveled all out. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this area. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and prep this track for paint, meaning I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it all down with some alcohol and some lacquer thinner, and then scuff it all out with gray Scotch-Brite. And we come back, I'll have this part of the, uh, <laughs> this part of the track painted, and what we'll need to do is paint out that red brick. So this portion right here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same technique, the four can uh, spray can technique. And uh, I have some other track that I need to paint at the same time. And what we'll do is when we come back, that'll be all painted and we'll start painting our red brick. All right, so now I have our little piece of track all painted and I have the effect here as far as the asphalt. So now what we need to do is go ahead and paint out our brick. Now, I sprayed the gray and stuff right over the top of this. And why I did that is so that it goes down inside and it creates, you know, kind of like a mortar in between all the bricks. So first thing that I have is two different acrylics. I'm using a black and also a red. And the red is just kind of a bright red. So first off, what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of this red and I'm gonna pick out a brick every once in a while and just go ahead and put some of this bright red down, okay? So I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of them this way, but just, just a few here and there. And what that's gonna do is just gonna kind of break up the, uh, the, the solid red. We wanna kind of have a little bit of blotchiness in there so that the bricks look a little bit more realistic and uh, it kind of gives it it just gives a little bit more of a contrast so I'm just gonna go ahead and color out some of these bricks with the uh, with the bright red and then just kind of make sure that I have a nice square edge to them so I'm gonna go ahead and do that when we come back we'll mix these two together and get our brick okay. red. and I've went ahead and just kind of painted a few of these with the bright red now what I want to do is take these two colors and just kind of mix them together a little bit. And what I'm doing is so I can make kind of a darker brick red, okay? So a lot of times I'll just kind of bring it in and that way you can have multiple different reds going on at one time. So if you just mix it up a little bit like that and bring this up, you can see that you have some darker stuff. It's a little bit not so much and it just you know you can just kind of come in here and pick which ones you want and then just go ahead and paint those out so we're kind of got a little bit more of a, a burgundy here and uh yeah so it's kind of a tedious process but it starts to look pretty cool once you get a bunch of different colors going on so what i'm going to do is Keep on going with this, and uh, we come back, we'll see what we got. Okay, so now I have all the red painted in here, and the last thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and give it a white dry brush. So what I'm using is an antique white, or an off white, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put on this board, and then work it into my brush, and I'm using a, a stiff bristle brush, and what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and lightly kiss this over on the top and that's just going to kind of give it a little bit of a, a wear and it's just going to kind of make some highlights onto those bricks so that they pop out so let me go ahead and hit these a little bit more like so you can see how that just kind of brings them out so i'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of this with the dry, dry brush and I'm just hitting it over the top and letting that brush hit the edges of where we use the soldering iron to, uh, to give it the highlights. And there we go. Just kind of hit it here and there until you're happy with it and there we go, we got some red brick. Okay, so there's our brick all finished up. And you know, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> looks like a regular uh, brickyard start and finish line. 
So what I'm gonna do at this point is go ahead and paint my white lines on either side of this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use some quarter inch tape, tape it off, and then use the off white and paint our lines on the side. So I have this piece and a few other pieces of track to do at the same time. So if you're wondering how that's done, if you go to some of the other uh, the videos that I have up as far as with the uh, painting track series, I show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all done, get this track installed, and then we'll take it to the next step. Okay, so now we went ahead and I have it all installed in the track and I have my white line on both sides. Now what we just need to do is I'm gonna do a little bit of weathering as far as some some tire wear and stuff on some of the other track that I, I painted along with this project. And then the final thing that I wanna show you guys is how to do cracking. So what I mean by that is if we go ahead and we come over here to the other side, I will show you some cracking that I did. So bring this down. If we look in this corner, you can see those cracks that are on the inside of this corner. So last thing we want to do is go ahead and do a little bit of cracking. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more shading on the track. And uh, when we come back, we'll do some cracking. So now I have all my shading done. So I went ahead and took some satin black and on a dry brush and just kind of went through certain areas and did a little bit of shading here and there just to make it look like I had a little bit of tire wear. But we've covered that before. So let's get to something we haven't covered yet. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this video is cracking and cracking is done like here on the side, you can see where there's the cracks on the edge of the asphalt. It's real easy to do. All I'm gonna do is take my soldering iron and with a really light touch, because it's gonna, it's gonna mark pretty quick, we just wanna come in and just drag it down. And then just kind of make your own design coming off, but just give it that little bit of extra oomph to it. And it's amazing what it does. I mean, it just it just adds that little bit more to to your layout as far as you know all the work that you put into it. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of that finishing little touch. So just kind of have some fun. Drag your your soldering iron around and make some cracks. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some cracks here and there throughout this area. And uh, yeah, real easy to do. Just light touch, kind of move the, move the soldering iron around in a jerky manner. You know, just kind of build these cracks out. So there we go. There's cracking. <laughs> so that looks pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and finish up with this and uh, we come back, we'll see what we accomplished.
right, there we go. We finished up another video. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. So again, we went ahead and covered those three techniques as far as effects go. And that was the cracking, the red brick, and the cobblestone. Now the cracking, like you saw, was pretty easy to do. And it has a really stellar effect when you're, you have your paint all on your track and everything. You want to add that little extra bit to it. Cracking is something you might want to look into. The cobblestone and the brick are a little bit more labor intensive. And if you do decide to go ahead and tackle that project, I really suggest that you find yourself a scratch piece of track that you can go ahead and practice on. So you get kind of a technique going before you attack the real thing. But otherwise, cool effects, and I hope you guys liked it. So next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, well, we're going to take a little break from doing painting track for a little while, and I am actually had a surprise that I got from the guys over in the UK from Magnetic Racing, and I am ecstatic to play with their stuff. It is, it is stellar, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So our next video will be with playing around with the wonderful things from magnetic racing so stick around for that one but if you like this video like it share it and subscribe to my channel and if you see that little bell at the top you can hit the bell leave a comment yeah it's all good and also also we have that facebook group and the facebook is the same name as the channel it's boone slot car garage and if you go on that I can show you some of the things that I'm working on as far as behind the scenes. You guys can show me what you're working on, and it's really cool. I mean, you guys are building some amazing stuff. So, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. Big old slot car family type of thing. So, if you, if you check it out, check it out. Also, there's an Instagram. Ugh, we got all sorts of stuff going on. So, from me, from Boone's, from <laughs> Boone's Slot Car Garage, I'm getting out of here, and I'll see you guys next time. Hi, I'm back. So sometimes things don't go nearly as planned when you're trying to do these videos. So the next couple clips, it's kind of some of the stuff that happens behind the scenes. So if you like it, tell me about it in the comments. Kind of experimenting. Yeah, figure what the heck. Mix it up a little bit. All right, enjoy. And for tonight. So we're going to keep on going with the trick. Ugh. Oh boy. And we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do some cobblestone. And we're gonna have to do a little bit of paint track. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. Hi, I'm. Start over. Join the group. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. So I can show what you guys are doing. Or a little bit. I, looks really cool and to go over oh blah, 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 blah. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.